Welcome back to Open Line. Thank you for joining us on this Monday night. My guest tonight, Representative John Ray Clemens, who is running for mayor here in Nashville. The uh, election, by the way, if you want to mark your calendar, is August first. It's going to be here before we know it. Summer's going to fly by, I have a feeling. It you is. are in the heat of running right now that the legislative session has wrapped up. I want to jump right back into our conversation and talk about what a lot of folks are talking about in the city right now is the mayor's plan to privatize parking for the city. And his proposed budget is highly reliant on making that deal. Uh, your thoughts on the plan? What do you like about it? What do you not like about it? Well, there's a lot not to like about it. I think it's one more example of a short-sighted, um, fiscally irresponsible approach to filling in a one-time budgetary hole. Uh, you know, and meanwhile, we're going to sign a 30-year contract and give away access to all of our public parking for 30 years to fill in a one-year budgetary hole uh, in the ballpark of $30 million. There's a, there's a lot not to like about this, and the conversations that we've had recently about this with the mayor's office sounded a lot to me like the conversations I had with the Haslam administration when they tried to privatize our state parks, and I led the opposition to that at the state legislature. And this, this issue is, is serious because it really goes to the root of a major challenge facing our city, and that's transportation. And, you know, we can do a better job of you know, uh, overseeing and managing our public parking in this city. And that was an excuse provided to me is that, oh, well, Metro's not doing a good job. We're not even doing a good job of enforcing it. Well, if you're the mayor, take responsibility for it and step up and run the department like it should be run and make sure that it's run appropriately. Don't use that as an excuse to privatize it and give away all of our public parking for 30 years for a one-time $30 million mm -hmm. pop on something that's been conservatively estimated to be worth $350 million of revenue. This is one of those examples where uh, we could invest a little money, add technology to it, like I said previously, and update the system make it work better more efficiently and then us benefit from all of that revenue and to put less burden on the back of nashville taxpayers rather than give all that revenue away to a private corporation an international corporation at that um, you know of course the contract now is up in the air it's been stayed in the chancery court here mm -hmm. by chancellor lyle we don't know where that's going to come down but the fact that the mayor would try to sell off our public parking just to fill in a one-year budgetary hole and then threaten to pull that money out of the general fund, that's fiscally irresponsible. Well, let's talk about that hole because it has been the topic of, of a lot of conversations. You know as well as I do, there has been a lot of pushback from promises made and promises not kept when it comes to giving our first responders raises. And, um, and, and I think that Mayor Briley, I think a lot of people have said, we've got to do it this year. We've got to make it happen. And perhaps this is the way they're making it happen. I'm not, you know, I can't say that 100%. But they have promised to do raises, and here's a big pot of money coming our way if this deal is passed. Uh, what to do with that hole, and why are we there in the first place, in your opinion? Well, there's a lot of reasons we're there. You know, one of the reasons, which isn't this mayor's fault, is the debt mm -hmm. is hitting. And right now, it's hitting the peak this year and next, and before it starts to taper off. And that was a result of us refinancing the city's debt. So, I, you know, I don't want to put that on the back of this mayor. Um, but we are making, and we have continued to make, fiscally irresponsible decisions. You know, we continue to give large property tax breaks to corporations looking to move to the city. That's the number one revenue source for our public education system. If City, you know, if companies are moving to sit uh, to our city and families are looking to move to our city, the number one thing they look at is the quality of the public education system when they look to move somewhere. And now we want to give away the chief funding source just to get them here. It's a self-defeating model because we're taking away from the very thing that they're relying on to come here that's going to create the workforce that's going to continue to fill their employment pool in the future. You know, we cannot continue to make those decisions and those are have accumulated to the point now where we're having to threaten to sell off our public parking. You know, last year they were threatening not to give the school system money unless they sold mm -hmm. Murrow Isle School Building and Edge Hill Park. Uh, you know, those types of, that type of management is irresponsible. We need to be more fiscally sound, have use more budgetary, be more responsible fiscally, and make decisions that are in the best interest of the city for the long term, not just for the short term, and addressing these issues as they arise. We have to have a plan and a long term vision for the city and make decisions along the way that fit that vision that will not put us in a bind that we find ourselves in now to the point where the mayor's office wants to sell off all of our public parking mm -hmm. 
for the sake of this one, to fill this one hole. Well, let me backtrack a little bit. How do you entice the companies to come here then when we're competing with other hot cities? We can't just right. say because we're hot you want to come here because right. there are several other hot cities. Right. How do you get those companies to come here so that we get those good paying jobs and we get those people here and the taxes, you know, are paid and all that jazz? Right. Well, first of all, let me start off by saying we should be <laughs> showing our small businesses that have been here all along just as much love as we're showing these big corporations. There are people who have started businesses in this city and have stayed here and have remained committed to our community and they're not getting any of the tension mm, or any true. of the incentives that the big corporations are getting. So we need to create some uh, equity there and show the people the love who've been <laughs> here a while and have made Nashville what it is today. Uh, you know, the reality is we are a booming city. We're a thriving city. Because we are a hot city, we're in that top tier. We're not where we were in the 1980s sure. and 90s, you know, where we were having to give away the farm and push all of our chips across the table and say, here's everything we have, please come here. Now we have a little leverage. Now we should be negotiating from a position of strength. The reality is, do we have to negotiate? Do we have to provide some incentives? Absolutely. If we want a corporation here and someone who's going to be a good corporate citizen wants to come to our city, we should negotiate in good faith and there will be some give and take. But this business of just giving away the farm just to sake for them to come here and so the mayor can cut a ribbon or whoever, that doesn't make any sense. Fiscally, uh, it's just irresponsible. So we have got to do a better job. There's so many different things we could be getting from these corporations that want to come here. These, you know, these are billion dollar corporations. Like Amazon, you know, Amazon, everybody likes to pick on Amazon. Right. It's a yes. giant corporation. And, and so let's use it hypothetically. You know, it's moving here. We should be getting upfront promises from Amazon to have minimum volunteer hours in our school system by its employees, getting them committed upfront to create partnerships with our schools and share technology and those types of things. We should be getting the commercial developers who are building these huge high rises in our city to pay their fair share in the form of linkage fees perhaps on the extra burden they're putting on our transportation infrastructure mm -hmm. as well as the water infrastructure system underneath this city which is over a hundred years old. We continue to pile on and pile on and grow for growth sake but we have got to be much more responsible in how we grow and how we build this city and we've got to just take a deep breath and make sure that we're addressing the foundation of this city because right now we're so far out in front of our skis we're going to fall over at some point and some would argue that we're already starting to fall over. All right, we got to take another quick break. When we come back, we're going to talk about pay raises for firefighters and police and teachers where Representative Clemens stands on that and your calls as well. Stay with us.